The Impact Lounge is the number one place to be for the real Impact Wrestling fans. Party people, what's good? Thanks for swinging by the Impact Lounge. News came out, breaking news. I want to say breaking news. It came out yesterday, and most of you already probably know this. Andrew Everett has requested his release from Impact Wrestling. All I can say to this is what a waste of an amazing talent, an outstanding talent that, frankly, um, I think this is an, a, a wrestler that we all liked very much. I don't know anyone who doesn't like Andrew Everett and who wasn't entertained by him. Now, I want to take you back a couple years. Bound for Glory 2015, to me, uh, there was a Ultimate X match. I think it was Manic, um, Tigre Uno. I think maybe DJZ was in it, and I don't remember the fourth one. And to me, that was the last great X Division match, uh, not including what's going on right now. And then we had the Pop TV era, where the X Division was you know, forcing people into the division, Eddie Edwards, Braxton Sutter, forcing people into the division that didn't really fit the style. And we we really went almost a couple of years without any real solid X division action. They just called it the X division. But the one guy who was there who could really wrestle that style was Andrew Everett. And of course, there was a couple names, uh, Mark Andrews, you know, guys that just were not be, being utilized. Who could bring that style back to the forefront? Talk about a bunch of starts and stops for a guy who just had so much potential to really wow the crowd. Now, did he have a gimmick and, you know, presence and mics? No, not necessarily. But if you're talking about an in-ring worker, he was really one of the most enjoyable ones to watch. And let's talk about what he's been doing on Impact recently or what he did do. When the tag team titles with DJ Z. Now, when they announced Z and E were going to be a tag team, I think everybody was really excited about this because they said DJ Z is not doing anything. Of course, he you know dealt with the injury. Andrew Everett's not doing with doing anything. Let's put them together, see what we can do. And they won the titles. And in the same same set of tapings, they dropped the titles. They were the definition of placeholders. They didn't get a rematch. They lost their next match to the Desi Hit Squad, and then we hadn't really seen him again. And then we saw Andrew Everett compete. When I say compete, they announced a match, him versus Desmond Xavier. And Eddie Edwards came and ruined the match. And it never even kicked off. It never, there was never even a match to be had. So basically, they presented both those guys you know, as not important by doing that. Because they didn't even reschedule the match. Desmond Xavier is another one we should probably be pretty worried about. I hope not. I hope they figure it out. DJ Z, I would not be surprised if he is the next one to go. Now, why do I say that? How does DJ Z fit in the current landscape of Impact Wrestling? Tag team was actually a good fit for him. If you look just at his gimmick and his style and everything, I just don't see him competing right now in the way that Impact is presenting the product as a singles competitor. I mean, what's he going to do? Wrestle Brian Cage? I don't see it happening. I could see DJ Z being the next one to go because at this point, what's there for him? His tag team partner's gone. And this was a tag team that really had some potential. They could have kept the titles on him. They never, never, never needed to give the titles to LAX, in my opinion. Z and E could have kept them for a little while. And even if they did drop them to someone else, they could have done some programs with the Desi Hit Squad or, or something like that. You know, th there's stuff they could have done with these guys and they just chose not to. Is it because they were holdovers from Dixie Carter? Who knows if it, if it's it seems like they're kind of clearing the deck of a lot of the people who came during the pop TV era under Dixie um, or it obviously before that DJ Z Andrew Everett guys have been around a, a little bit longer than that. But I think this was the best move for Andrew Everett's career because you've got to have confidence in yourself at some point you have to have respect for yourself. That's why when I look at a guy like a Mike Bennett or something it, it's it's really hard for me to respect Someone who doesn't appear to have respect for themselves. Not enough wrestlers say, hey, I'm not being utilized properly somewhere. Let me go gamble, take a chance on myself. Now, I'm not saying Andrew Everett was going to be the next AJ Styles. I don't think he was going to be competing in the world title division by any stretch of the imagination. But he could have been a big part of the X division. And then, you know, he had the, the angle... I shouldn't, yeah, the angle, you know, where there was the, uh, uh, what the hell, Helms Dynasty, which Helms Dynasty I thought was actually pretty cool. That never really got much traction. You know, Shane Helms and Trevor Lee turn on him, 
And Andrew Everett's starting to get a little bit of momentum, actually getting a couple wins. You think this guy's going to be the next X Division champion. Then Jeff Jarrett comes through and they revamp the X Division, make it about Sanjay, make it about Loki, trying to take it back to people who used to be in the division a long time ago. He became an afterthought. And, you know, even in the random multi-man matches, they, you know, they weren't even throwing this dude in. When you see guys predominantly used in Japan and, and uh, Mexico, that's I've joked about this before, but that's usually a sign like we, we kind of got nothing for you. You're under contract, so we're going to find ways to pay you. But we have nothing for you on television, so we're going to find work for you. But talk about a guy who really um, wowed us in the ring and, and was really keeping the X Division style alive when the X Division wasn't the X Division. Now, what kind of impact does this have on the X Division? Here's uh, here's my thoughts on this. I really, truly think that the X Division is becoming more of a mid-card thing than a cruiserweight deal. Obviously, you can see that with Brian Cage. I'm going to talk that talk about that a little deeper in another vlog down the line, but I think the X Division style, even though it's going to keep some of the elements from the old X Division, I think they're going a different direction with it. So, you know, a, a guy like an Andrew Everett, a DJZ, you're never going to see him compete for the title. It's, it's, it's probably not going to happen. Now, Desmond Xavier is a different story because he did lose a number one contenders match. And they even told that story that maybe, you know, Desmond is going to try to beat him one day. That's kind of the in-ring story I got from it. They're obviously going a, a different direction with the division. Now, how does this impact long-term effect on some of the other stars? So, Let's look at the knockouts division. Allie, not too long ago, they released her husband. Rosemary, her partner. Now they have released her boyfriend. Well, he asked for his release. Now, many of you are going to say, well, they're, they're faces of the knockouts division. They're, they're the biggest stars. I, I don't consider myself a wrestling expert, but I do know business. They have built a brand, the Demon Bunny brand. And a company has to be worried when a wrestler builds their own brand. You can, re you can replace a talent you can replace replace someone's in-ring skills with someone else similar. You can even, to an extent, replace a gimmick or put something very similar in its place. But when someone has a powerful brand like Demon Bunny has become, they can do this on their own. So to me, I'm thinking it would behoove you to probably keep these two ladies happy. So that's something that I really think to keep an eye out for the long term. We underestimate the loyalty that... Uh, men and women have to each other to their to their mates we underestimate that loyalty a lot when it comes to wrestling and i can take it you can take it back to aj lee in her prime getting out of wrestling to support her husband but this is something to really keep an eye on in my opinion i've met rosemary three times and two times andrew everett was with her that was wrestlecon and uh tnt pro in tennessee you know he's right there with her travels with her braxton sutter used to travel with Ali everywhere. Now these uh, women will be traveling by themselves. So I, I do think it's something that the company needs to be cognizant of. Andrew Everett, released from the company, has asked to, asked to go. What's a good fit for him? Ring of Honor is a good fit. MLW could be a good fit. I, I don't see him... I don't see what he could offer NXT. I mean, obviously there's there's uh, his in-ring style, but I don't see them putting him on television above... Uh, some of these other cats that they might have. So I think those are going to be good fits and, and maybe he will just take extra independent bookings. But Andrew Everett, you know, good luck to you. You obviously have confidence in yourself, respect for yourself. The company wasn't doing anything with you. They weren't pushing you. You're betting on yourself. Good luck to you. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. And for more from the Impact Lounge, check out the videos below.